Hi guys and welcome back to another episode in the IMGY series. Today I will teach you about checkboxes, buttons and sliders that use either float or int. Before starting please leave a like and subscribe, this is the new channel and I hope we can get where we were the last summer, unfortunately. Um, so please leave a like and subscribe because it supports me a lot and shows appreciation and let's get right into the video. Also join Discord server. Um, for a bunch of interesting stuff, link in the description. So, the last video we began our little test window here and we set the size of that test window. So, in this video we're gonna learn about three things. We're gonna learn about checkboxes that will work with balls. We will learn about buttons, when you click the button something happens. And about sliders, which you can use to give a custom value to an int variable or a float variable int and floats are numbers and I'll explain in a second. So let's start with checkboxes. Checkboxes are correlated to ball options and ball options are basically a variable which can only have two values, either true or either false. So when so let's create our ball, make sure to create it above the while loop. So somewhere up here where it says our state, you can group all the variables here. And let's go with ball and let's say test ball. And we can type equal false and put the comma at the end. Now, if you don't type equal false and define it just like this, it will have by default false, but you can type equal false so you know where you defined it and how you defined it. So now we have a ball that it is, is equal to false, right? In order to make a checkbox that will change that ball to true or to false if it's already true, we need to go inside our window or inside the window you want to place the checkbox and go I'm GY, I'm guy being the namespace, double dot double dot, and then you're gonna type checkbox. And now you see it asks for two uh two arguments, a constant char label, which will be the name, and the ball we want to turn on and off. So the name will be, let's say, test ball. And after that, the uh, ball will be the test ball we did here. But we need to type a shift seven before this character. And then our test ball. And the comma at the end. And now if we compile the DirectX 11 example, go here and click build. You can copy this here. And as you can see, we now have a test ball here, which we can turn on and off. So right now our ball state is false. And when we tick the checkbox, now our ball inside the program memory is turned on. So basically it's true. And based on this, you can do multiple checks. Okay, all right, so this is the ball. This is how you can set the ball to true or false. Now, what about buttons? Let's say you want just to click a button and you want some code to execute. This is much easier and I'll show you right now. You will need an if statement. So we'll start with if, open bracket. And here you're gonna type imgy double dot double dot button. Another set of parentheses for the button. And inside here, you see it's only gonna ask for one argument you might see there are two arguments but this is an optional one this will be the size of the button we won't use it for now so we're gonna only give it a label or a name and this name will be let's say click me and then open brackets now inside this is where everything will happen when you click the button so if you click the button everything that is inside here any line of code that is inside here will be executed so let's say you want to show another window so let's say let's say we want a ball so if test ball we created here is true so let's see if test ball equals true Uh, and let's start another window. So if I'm GY 
begin. So let's make another window. Let's say window two. And don't forget to end the window right here. We find GY end. Um, and I'm GY set next as you learned in the previous video. Set next window size. We're using I'm vector two. And let's say 200 by 200. All right. So now if the test ball is true, we can open another window. So let's make the button turn the test ball true. So for now, we're just going to type test ball equals true. So now if we press the button, our test ball should turn to true and our window should show. Let's test this real quick. See if it works fine. So as you can see, we have a click me and when we click me, you see the checkbox turned on because the ball is now true and another window has popped here. So crazy, right? Let's do another test with me. If you click me again, it's not going to turn the window off because the button only turns it on. But you know what will turn it off? The ball. So the checkbox, sorry. So if you click the checkbox again, the window will disappear. How cool is that? All right. Let's go on. Let's now use a slider int by example. So a slider int will basically let you uh, put a value in an int um, between a value that is consisted of a number. So in order to give you an example, we're gonna create an int. Int only contains whole numbers. So one, two, three, or four, not 1.2, not 1.5. So let's say int int test, right? And let's give it starting value to 10, right? So int test by default will have its started value by 10. Now let's create a slider float here. So let's see here under the button. I'm GY slider int. And as you can see, it asks for many or well, more than before, it asks for quite a few arguments. So let's see what these all are. First of all, we have the label, um, which is the name as explained before. So let's say choose number, right? Now we're going to have the int v, which will be our uh, int. So where we will store the value. So the int we created int test. Again, shift seven in test, right? And then we need to tell uh, our slider int two more uh, variables, the vmin and the vmax. This is the max, the minimum value that our int can get and the maximum value. So I want the minimum value to be one and let's say the maximum value to be 25, right? Now to check that this actually works, we can go here where it asks if test ball equals true and put two vertical lines, this mean or. So this is the operand that says or. So either test ball equals true or int test equals, let's say equal equal 25. So this means that if either test ball is true or int test is 25, our window will open. This is to check if, um, if everything works fine. So we can open this again here. As you can see, the, ch the choose number is at 10 now. And if we can drag it, you know, as you can see, but what happens if we drag it to 25, boom. As soon as it hits 25, the int uh, variable gets the value 25 and the second window opens. This is quite crazy and quite nice. The same works for float numbers. It's the same principle. You just, instead of this, you're going to use, um, you're going to use a float variable, but I'll show you right now. Why not? So let's create a float. 
named float test and let's give it value of 5.5 f if you don't have a if you have a full whole number as a float it's good to type f after to tell the program this is a float value you don't always need to type the f after but it's just good to type it so type it there so 5.5 and at the end f from float and now let's make our slider float let's actually choose in here and let's make another one you can just copy paste and from slider in here change to slider float uh, might not exist though in this version no it's fine slider float and then choose float instead of int test we're going to type our float of course so float test and instead of uh, one let's say the minimum value will be uh, 0 0.1 f and then the maximum value will be 15.5 uh, f and right now we have a choose float which will be able to make our variable value from 0 1 to 15.5 you can add another test here just by this too so or and we can type float test equals equals let's say 15.5 f and again our window will open if that's true i hope you understood what checkboxes uh buttons and sliders are and as well what bows ints and floats are and yeah thank you guys for watching please leave a like and subscribe and soon I will have a website in the description where you will be able to download the latest code in case you could not follow along. But for now, it's easier enough so you can follow. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe and leave a like and join Discord if you like this video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.